Here we come back to some more real world applications and problems dealing with exponential growth and in this case exponential decay. So let's talk about what a half-life means. So a half-life is a measurement of time and it's how long it takes for a particular substance to lose half of itself, half of its mass, right? And oftentimes we use this when we're talking about radioactive decay. Radioactive decay is where certain radioactive isotopes will just naturally through the course of their makeup and structure will break down into different isotopes or different elements. Uh, you've heard of carbon, uh, carbon dating where you take something that's really old and you measure the amount of carbon-14 um, atoms in there and that's using a half-life. It's using this concept of exponential decay. Now carbon-14 has a half-life of like over 5,000 years. There are some radioactive elements like uranium-235 where you're talking about millions of years. Uh, sometimes it's really short. So in this first example I'm going to give you is about radon. So the half-life of radon-222 is 3.8 days. So that's a comparatively you know, short half-life when you compare that to carbon-14 or uranium or you know, a lot of those other ones out there like plutonium uh, and uh, radium. So here's radon. Half-life of 3.8 days. The question is how much how much of a 30 six gram sample will remain after 14 days. How much of a, four, of a 36 gram sample will remain after 14 days? Well, we know how long a half-life is and that information right there is enough for us to write our equation that will answer any other questions about this problem. So if we go back to our basics, y equals y naught e to the kt. Okay? We know what we're starting with. We know that the initial value is 36 grams. We know that the time is going to be 14. What we don't know is the k value. If I knew my rate, if I knew my rate of decay, then I could just throw that, all that stuff into my graphing calculator and it's going to spit out the answer that tells me how much is going to be left after 14 days. We don't know the k, but we can find the k. So if you remember in the last videos, so if we wanted to find doubling time, we would look at something like this. So for doubling time, we would say that the natural log of 2 was k times t. Well, if you want to find the half-life, you don't want to double, you want to look at doing the natural log of 1 half. And that's going to equal k times t. So that's going to give you the same kind of relationship that we have for doubling and tripling time, but you're talking about half-life, so you're looking at the natural log of 1 half. So over here, let's look at that. I can say that the natural log of one half is k times t. Now I know my half-life guy right here is 3.8, so this is your t. That's your half-life. So that means that my k is the natural log of one half divided by that half-life time. So the natural log of one half divided by t, which is 3.8. So k is approximately, well, let's see. We got the natural log of 1 half divided by 3.8. So we end up with a negative rate, which makes sense because we are losing stuff. At radioactive decay, you break down, you're losing. So we have a negative rate, not a growth, not a positive number, but negative. So this is approximately negative 0 0.1824. And here's what that means. 
That means we have our K value. We know that we start with a 36 gram sample. So for this problem, your final value is going to be your initial value, which is 36, times e to the kt. Well, my k is negative 0 0.1824 and then times t. So this now is a formula for anything else we might have about this particular problem where you're starting with a 36 gram sample of radon-222. Well, the question here says, how much is going to be left after 14 days? And so now we just evaluate this when t equals 14. So when t equals 14, we're going to have 36 e to the negative point 1824 times 14. Now before we just kind of dive in and say what the answer is by plugging it into the calculator, I want us to think about it. The half-life is 3.8 days. So let's let's round, let's estimate. Let's say this is four days, right? So that means in four days you're going to have half of this, which is going to be 18. In eight days, half of that, which is 9. In 12 days, half of that, which is 4.5. In 16 days, half of that, which is two and a quarter. So I expect my answer to be between two and a quarter and four and a half, because 14 is in between the 12 and 16 as we were estimating. So let's see how good our estimate is. I'm saying between between two and four. Seems like that should be close enough. And I'll be honest, I haven't even typed this in. I've never done, haven't done this one before. I'm just using number sense to see what's going to happen, or what should happen. That way, if I get a crazy number, I have to go back and rethink my math. Because sometimes I do make mistakes, just don't tell people about it. Now, I didn't store this in for x, but what I can do is I can press second and the negative sign to just grab the answer, times 14. And, oh, look at that. There you go, you get 2.8. So the amount that is left is approximately 2.8 grams. So again, as, as we were estimating it, so as an estimate, here's what we were doing. If you look at T and you look at, you know, how many grams did you have? When time was zero, you had 36 grams. The half-life was about four days, so I estimated. Four days, you're gonna lose half of that. You're gonna be at 18. Another four days, you're gonna lose half of that. So you get nine. Another four days, lose half, and you're at 4.5. And then we go to 16. Half of this is 2.25. Now, I know this is only an estimate because it said 3.8 days. But I figured I could get close enough. I could get within a good range to know whether or not, once I went to the calculator, if what I got made sense or if it didn't make sense. So let's do another quick one and see what happens.